Something I like to do from time to time is to go over to a site like AliExpress and see what microcontroller boards are, are available coming out from these kind of independent uh, Chinese design houses. And I recently found one using an STM 32G0 uh, processor. Here it is, I ordered it, took a few weeks to get here of course. And today I wanna to look at this processor and ask the question, why isn't it being used more? Why is it so underrated? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the STM32G0, which is a Cortex M0 Plus uh, microcontroller running at 64 megahertz. In particular, we're actually going to be looking at the STM32G030C8T6. Uh, why is that? That's because that's the exact part number I've got on a board, which I will show you in a moment. Now, the, it's a Cortex M0 Plus, as I said, running at 64 megahertz. Now, here's the big thing. Why is the STM32G series different to the F series, which we find, for example, in the blue pill and the black pill? And that's because this one now has a 90 nanometer process node. Now, of course, that's very different to what you know you get in the bleeding edge, you know, smartphone processors or in, you know, on the desktop, you're talking, you know, five, seven, 10 nanometers there. Microcontrollers are, of course, a very different thing. Cost, of course, is very important. So here are some of the numbers that come directly from the manufacturer. They claim it uses less than 100 microamps per megahertz when running at 64 megahertz. And to compare that to an STM32 F0, the previous generation with the Cortex M0 Plus, that requires 250 uh, microamps a megahertz. It's got a stop mode that can go as low as three microamps with only the flash and the uh, real-time clock switched off. There's a standby mode which demands just 200 nanoamps. And yet it can wake from stop and from standby in just a fraction of a second. Some other important things about the G-Series is a crypto core for accelerating AES 256-bit computations. There's a true random number generator. There's a programmable secure memory area. So those are all focused on security. There's a memory protection unit, a sandbox that isolates program threads while supporting secure operating systems. It's not the same as a memory management unit, but it is interesting in the fact that you can now stop uh, uh, different programs, different threads interfering with other ones. And also it has USB-C and power delivery uh, capabilities thanks to the UCPD interfaces, there's two of them, and that enables the management of Type-C connectors without requiring an external power delivery controller. Now USB-C does not feature on the board that I've got, but that is a feature of the processor itself. Okay, so here is the board that I've got. It's the, you know, it's the STM32G030, uh, and there you can see the chip on it. So that's the main, uh, you know, the star of the show, really, just this chip, and the rest of it is just supporting uh, kind of um, circuitry. On the right-hand side here, we have five pins that are for programming, and we'll talk about more in a moment. That's the SWD interface. You can't program it via this USB, micro USB port here. You have to use a different method of which uh, I've chosen to do it with SWD and it works absolutely perfectly. And then down here you've got some user interaction stuff, a couple of LEDs, one of them is power, one of them is programmable, a couple of buttons, one of them is reset and one is programmable. And on the reverse side, you can see this is the name of the Dev E Box uh, board. I got it from AliExpress. I've obviously, I'm not affiliated with any of these things in any way whatsoever, but I like the labeling, lots and lots of labeling on this, which does make it a lot easier to use. Okay, so let's do a quick comparison between the STM32G030 compared to the blue pill and the black pill, which of course use the F uh, series, so we can get a, a feel of what's going on here. Well, first of all, of course, we're looking at a Cortex M0 Plus at 64 megahertz for the G0. The blue pill has got the Cortex M3, and the black pill has got the Cortex M4F with the floating point unit, which we'll talk about in a second. 64K of flash, 8K of RAM, so very low end here, so lower end processor, lower end storage capabilities, but of course that does technically mean that it should have a better price when you come to just buying the processor itself. The others higher, 64K of flash, the same, but 20K of RAM on the blue pill, 512K of flash, 128K of RAM uh, on the black pill, USB type C connector on the black pill, micro USB on the blue pill, micro USB on this one, but only for power, no FPU, but there is a floating point unit and DSP type instructions on the black pill. So the black pill is much more sophisticated in terms of the processor, the storage, the USB, and all that kind of stuff. This one, however, is aimed at the lower end, but also at more power efficiency, which of course we will dive into uh, quite soon. 
Other few things to mention, 5 DMA channels compared to 7 and 16, 4 timers compared to 7 and 7, 2 uh, serial ports compared to 3 and 3, and there's a high speed, 2 of the high speed serial ports on the black pill, 2 I squared C, 2 SPI, the same, but there's 3 I squared C and 5 SPI, some of them up to 50 megabits a second on the black pill. So again, you can see that they change the features according to the price point. This uh, low end one definitely has what you need. You've got timers, you've got serial ports, you've got I squared C, but not so many, not necessarily high speed ones. Okay, now how would you program one of these? Well, of course, the official way is to use ST Microelectronics own STM32 Cube Suite, which is free to download. Uh, and you will need the STM32 Cube programmer regardless of what platform you use to actually program it because that's how you use that uh, SWD port that I was talking about earlier and again we'll talk about that in a second. Now what I've actually been using is Arduino via STM32 Duino so that is a, a package that you could a library you can compatibility boards you can put in the Arduino uh, IDE and then you can program a lot if not all of the STM32 uh, boards and I was able to program this one without any problem of that. You can use platform IO, you can just use the GCC, the ARM version of GCC, and there are projects like Lib OpenCM, a free uh, firmware library for various ARM Cortex microcontrollers. You can basically use that. You can use ARMS tools, you can use Embed OS. Now, the ones with little stars here means that you can use these with this particular processor, but when you pick which board you're using, you're not going to find the Dev E box board there. So you may have to do some tweaking to actually get the right thing working. But with the Arduino here, you could just say use a generic uh, STM32G030 board, and it just kind of says, okay, that's what I'll do, and it, and it just works. Now, I said about programming. To program it, you're going to need this ST-Link v2 and that's based in swd interface uh, you can buy them for just two or three dollars of course plus tax and shipping from aliexpress i'm sure you can get them locally wherever you are at your local store that sells microcontroller boards or raspberry pi picos or whatever it is that you want you can get them they're pretty pretty much available just about anywhere now the way it works is this is a set of pins at one end there's a usb port at the other end so you plug it straight into your pc and you need to wire up these pins according to this little wiring diagram here to the pins over here so it's quite simple this pin here we look here is sw clock so you connect it to the clock one this one here is sw dio so you connect it to the dio one in fact you can connect them all up you've got the power you've got the reset and once you've got those wired up then you 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 can just program your device straight away in fact here is a picture of my board and as you can see there is my little st link the usb port plugs into your pc there it goes round. I've wired it up. I've got a header on my one that came free with the um, with the board, and it's pretty simple just to wire it up. Now you may have noticed this thing here in the right hand corner. That is in fact an FTDI FT232, which is a USB to serial uh, UART. Again, they cost two three dollars plus shipping uh, and taxes from AliExpress, and again probably from anywhere local to you that sells microcontroller boards, our Arduino stuff and so on. And that's because basically there is no USB serial support through this micro USB connect. It's only for power. So if you actually want to get some USB logging, then you need to use a, an extra board like this one. Wiring it up is pretty simple. You put the RX pin on the adapter to PA1. You put the TX pin to PA0 and you connect the ground to ground so there's all common ground across the circuit. Now these pins do actually, these do actually have a five volt rail on here as well. I'm not using it because you are getting the voltage also, the power through the ST links. Of course, you don't want to power it twice. So I've only connected up the actual transmit and receive and the ground. And notice of course here that if it's RX goes to PA1, then of course it's the TX pin is PA1 because you cross them over. So TX on one is the RX on one, RX on one is the TX on the other. And so you can use it inside of Arduino by just setting up the soft serial to find the pins, soft serial, give it the two pins, and then you can just say soft serial dot print line, just like you would normally, uh, my serial print line, like you would normally with the other uh, kind of serial stuff. So very easy to use once you connect up those pins. And I, that's how I used it on my setup. Okay, so I wanted to test the performance and the uh, power efficiency of this board. So what did I do? I used a, a program which I've got which uses the N-Queen's uh, chess problem with a board size of uh, 15. You can find the algorithm for that uh, all over the place or on the internet. It's in C, so I was able to put it into the Arduino. The test is very, very repeatable. Always gives you the same results within one millisecond. I used the Arduino IDE with the STM32 
support package as I said I also put in the RP2040 support package because I ran it on that as well to compare the performance uh, and the power efficiency compared to the Raspberry Pi Pico same code used across all the boards nothing special no special optimizations or anything like that and they all use minus 03 on the compiler flags okay so let's start with the raw time how long does it take to solve the n queens with a board size of 15 well if you look up here the jade pedal pebble which i've mentioned in previous videos it's a, a cortex m0 board built here in uh, europe uh, and that's got the samd the sam d21 cortex m0 running at 48 megas it takes the longest at 127 seconds next comes the st m32 g0 for 112 seconds then big performance games we get to the m3 uh, the raspberry pi pico because it's running at 133 megahertz 42 seconds and the fastest remains the black pill with 30 seconds there for the m4 running at 100 megahertz of course we've mentioned different clock speeds there the black pill's got to 100 megahertz the pico's got to even faster at 133 megahertz 72 megahertz and so on so of course uh, the megahertz of clock speed has a big impact on the actual performance now it is possible to do a bit of mathematics and work out what would be the performance if you ran them all at the same clock speed. I chose a clock speed of one megahertz. So what is the performance like if you ran all of them at the same uh, clock speed? Well, here it is. It's quite interesting. The slowest is actually the STM32 G0. Then the slightly faster is the uh, Jade Pebble. And then the Pico again, because these are all Cortex M0. So you can see how they have similar, not the same. The, the Pico is a very well-built processor. Uh, but you can see how they're all are very very up here in that higher range whereas then we get to the m3 and the m4 they're much much faster even when you're running up the same just one megahertz there so obviously the architecture of the Cortex m3 and the Cortex m4 are much much superior to the m0 and that's how it's designed obviously it uses more transistors more complicated chip and so therefore you get better performance now it's possible to get the current used by the board using ohm's law and measuring the voltage drop across a shunt which is why i've done it in this video and in previous videos as well and i know it is important to note this is the usage of the board not just of the microprocessor uh, on the board so i try to minimize all other usages like for example there's no led on and so on so this gives some interesting insights so how, what, how many milliamps are used while running the N Queens 15? Well, if you look at the blue pill here, that's using the most 37 milliamps during uh, consistently while it's running the N Queens 15. Uh, next, you have the Pico running uh, 23 uh, milliamps. Then you have the black pill for uh, 18 uh, milliamps. And then the other two Cortex uh, M0 boards here are doing very well. 13 milliamps for this AMD 21 board there. And the lowest, 8 milliamps. So the stm 2 G0 is doing what it says on the packet. It is actually built on a better process node and it's giving a very, very low current usage while running that program. Just 8 milliamps. Huge difference there compared to the blue pill. So what does that mean per megahertz? Because obviously, again, they're all running at different megahertz. So the blue pill, again, is the kind of the bit of the beast there. 0.51 milliamps per megahertz. The others are doing quite well. 16, 17, 18, 27 there. But again, the lowest is the uh, STM32 G0. So it is really offering the lowest uh, power usage uh, while running uh, intensive CPU intensive programs. But if board A only uses 8 milliamps but takes 122 seconds to complete the task, but board B uses 18 milliamps, so more power, but it only takes 30 seconds, which one is more efficient? Is it better to do use less power for a longer amount of time or use more power for a shorter amount of time, which will use the least amount of power overall? Well, I've done the calculations. I'm quoting it in milliwatt hours here, again, for Queen's uh, 15. So the blue pill takes the most overall, uh, 2.8 milliwatt hours. Then you've got the Pico and the stm 2 g 0 doing very well, 1.2, 1.4, respectively. The Jade Pebble are certainly a lot higher there. But the winner, <laughs> if you consider how quickly it does it and how much power it takes, actually the most efficient for overall energy consumption is the uh, Black Pill. So what can we say then? So the most efficient board is the Cortex M4 base Black Pill because it does its job quickly without using a huge amounts of power and therefore it gets the job done quickly and overall uses less uh, energy. 
and that is followed up by the STM32 board. The Cortis uh, M0 base black pill offers the best raw performance. It will just get things done the quickest, followed by the Raspberry Pi Pico. The Raspberry Pi Pico, in my opinion, remains the best all-rounder due to its price, the ecosystem, and, of course, something its dual core, which the others aren't uh, in this test. And, of course, there's also a version with built-in Wi-Fi, the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So lots of options, lots of choice, dual core, but good ecosystem, Wi-Fi available if you need it makes the Raspberry Pi Pico certainly a good uh, option. The STM32G030 offers the lowest power consumption, no doubt about that, and that's not even speaking about the sleep and standby modes. This is just in while running. And before you mention it in the comments, yes, please see my other videos. I've done similar comparisons with ESP32 boards, so all that similar data is available there as well. Okay, that's it. That's my look at the STM uh, G030. Tell me in the comments below what you think of it as a processor and whether you'd like to see it in more popular boards. Would you like it to become the kind of the next blue pill or the next black pill? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.